Okay, everybody, welcome back into Strange Ways, episode 29. Make sure you check out Hard Rock Music, the other playlist, because myself, uh, solo stuff, and with Scott uh, will be featured on that as well. We just did a uh, song ranking for ACDC's Highway to Hell. That's on there, and we will be doing another, probably quite a few, if not all, ACDC. I also want to throw some other bands in, so we're kind of spread it out, so there's music for everybody. So, Scotty Boy, what do we got going today? Oh, man, man, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be interesting, guys. I mean, you know, this this is the band to talk about all the time, man. Kiss Asylum, man. We're going to rank these songs, a album that... I didn't even know it had come out. This was one that uh, I was walking through Roses. I think Roses or Sky City. It was all kind of damn places. And this was the cassette era. You know, they had them long plastic things hooked to the cassette, you know. I mean, yeah, we could easily take them in our field jackets. That, man, yeah, that, but, uh, that, that they'd never take off for you, so you'd go home and cut yourself six ways a Sunday trying yeah. to pry that son of a bitch out of there. Yes, but a damn, a damn good album, brother. I don't care what people say about it. I know they look like idiots, uh, but they wouldn't have looked like idiots if they hadn't used all that shit on their face. The the, the clothing didn't yeah. bother me that bad. It was the makeup they used on their face. Hell, man, Animal Eyes yeah. wasn't even nowhere near that. I wish they would have kept the same yeah. thing on the Animal Eyes and took it to the asylum. They they're they're you know. I don't. I don't know why they went the poison transvestite look. Uh, did not man. did not work. Did not work, and I think it hurt the album's credibility. Uh, well, yeah, but it, uh, it did I mean? But but still, it's it's a great album. A sound. Yeah. I, I mean, I've always this is another one of those albums I've always had that spot for, man. I mean, I this has come out. I was getting ready to get my license, man. I mean. It's it's a big point in your life. Great sh concert, great show. Not quite as bad as Animal Eyes. I don't like to knock on Animal Eyes. That's the first time I've seen them, but this one was better. Rob, okay. hi. Well, I I really really still have a bitter uh, taste in my mouth because I saw Animal Eyes here. Um, and of course this is all pre driver's license days for me, age wise. And then, uh, asylum did come a hundred miles away to Jamestown, North Dakota, where I was born, where most of my relatives lived. Uh, but for whatever reason, uh, my mom couldn't swing driving down there in the middle of the week. I think it was. I remember all the hype with the dried ice that was going to be under the stage to, you know, give them that natural steam or smoke. I remember reading the headline the next day that a bunch of equipment was stole out of some of the semis that night. But I, I never got to see this. I've seen, for some reason, the only YouTube uh, videos of this tour live are the world's worst camera ever. Uh, you can barely, it's like they're, they're filmed from the balcony of a baseball stadium without a zoom. Oh, um, all, all I know is there's, uh, there's a lot of, uh, controversy of the yellow lightning bolt stairs to nowhere, whatever. It looked cool. I wish the hell I could have seen it, but fabulous album. A huge, and a huge damn, uh, kiss sign behind them too, man. Yeah, oh, yeah, dude, that's where that's where they changed it from the light bulbs to the big spotlights, right? The colored spotlights. Yeah, yeah. Kiss was the whole background on this one. That's how big the damn letters were. It was the whole back, the biggest one they've ever had. This is Kiss. That was at that tour because that was the whole cool. background. Man, it was badass. Gotcha. I, I will say that, but uh, black and blue opened up for them on that one. You know how how awesome. Convenient that is, but they were great. I ain't got nothing bad to say about them. They were doing their uh, second album tour, which was Without Love, Black and Blue Without Love. Great fucking album. 
great fucking album. Side note, people, uh, watch this channel or my other channel, which is uh, Rank or Tank Music. Used to be Victory Cast because within three weeks, I will be at Rock Timber and Black and Blue with Jamie St. James will be there. So I will have some footage uh, for either channel, both channels, just to see how it goes. That'd be awesome. That'd be awesome. Okay, Scott, I believe it's your turn to start it off. I'm up. That means you get the last say on the kiss song, man. All right. Mm. Let's see. Now, I, now I'm going to tell you guys, this is not like my last time. Any of you Carolina hard rock heads out there that remember this, this buck looking through the glass here. Any of y'all remember me? I know one, one does. I'm kind of glad y'all don't remember this because this is going to be a change up for me. I mean, everything I'm listening to from front to freaking back, man, several times since we've been, that's all I got is that and ball breaking. Back and forth, back and forth, because Ball Breaker, I ain't heard since probably the late 90s all the way through, bro. I'm, I'm talking Tell you what, I've old, never heard it. I've never album. heard it since. It's got, this was a first time for me. Okay, well then, damn, Stan, I was giving you something that was kind of away from Highway to Hell, I thought. And it is, it's not Highway to Hell. We're not going to get into that discussion now, but. It's more on the side of ACDC putting fillers on their albums. ACDC never done okay. that, man, until 85. But anyway, Asylum. Okay. Here we go. Great freaking album. There's a lot of changes for me. Number 10 is going to be I'm Alive. No. Uh, secretly cruel man that changed from before okay. I'm, i think i'm alive used to be my worst this thing here was blinking out on me i couldn't see what the heck i was doing all right yeah secretly cruel guys a song that has dropped over time for me uh and my friend i uh, want my best friend in high school his name's wayne wayne yelton if you out there you crazy redheaded motherfucker you uh he that was <laughs> hey that was his favorite song on the album he was more of a Leonard okay. Skinner type, 38 special type, you know, mellow type. But he loved Kiss. He loved ACDC. He loved all these bands, too. But he was more of a – he liked country, too. See, you know, so a – true, A true Southern boy. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, I never did care for it that much. But, yeah, man, the song is just uh, – and a lot of people love it. But to me, it's a filler. I'm sorry. I – I never had this up at the top of my list ever on this album, uh, but it's not bad. I just want to get this out there. Too. There's nothing on this album I hate. I, I like all these yeah. songs, man, but I just got to fall somewhere. Okay, same with me. I, I, I enjoy this album a lot more than most KISS fans, um, at least that most KISS fans admit to online. Um, but my number 10 is Love's a Deadly Weapon. Uh, it's got a cool riff, uh, you know, a decent tune. It's it's a good listen, definitely. None of these are skippable tracks. Uh, this is just not one I go to or think of when I think Asylum. So, like Scott said, they got to fall somewhere, like we all say, every time. So, my number 10, Love's a Deadly Weapon. Okay. And a song that used to be at the bottom of the barrel for me on this album. Uh, it's not next, but I, I mean, I did not appreciate these songs because Gene had checked out. I didn't really, um, uh, I didn't really give him the credit that he deserved on a lot of the stuff that he come in with back then. But over time, now that I really, really, really listen, Paul's got the better songs, but damn, they're not, they're, all your songs are not that great, Paul. And all Gene songs is not, you know, shitty either, man. I just go ahead and say that. But anyway, okay. I've learned to like a lot of them. And my next one is Who Wants to Be Lonely? Now, oh, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this one's, I've always liked this song. I mean, I love the video. <laughs> Hell, you got to love the video. Yeah. Uh, but. <laughs> You know, I mean, look, man, 
uh, it's I, I love the course. I mean, I love the verses. The chorus is what I do not like in the song. I, it just carries too long. Oh, 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 oh. And then he'll do it again. Who wants to be lonely? Oh, oh. Uh, I just it's it's overkill in the song almost. Not not completely, okay. but almost. That's what kills it for me. Great song, great riff, great beat. Paul sings his ass off. That's it. It's good. Fair enough. It's a song I've I've always wanted to love the song, um, mostly because in that day and age, uh, Paul Stanley was God to me. Uh, But it was one of those, depending on the day, if I'd skip it or not uh, back then. So, yeah, I get it. Uh, My number one, speaking of wanting to love a Paul song, and I just never could, it's okay. Uh, It's radar for love. I, I. I thought, you know, I love the way it starts, but it just, it's just, it's too choppy for me. There's something about Radar in songs, right? Because the same way I feel about Radar Love, uh, whether White Lion does it or the original by, uh, shit, I'm drawing a blank. Who, uh, is it, uh, who does the original version? Golden oh, Earring? Oh, oh, radar, oh. radar Love? Oh, radar yeah. love golden, golden, golden earring yeah yeah okay anyway same same type of thing to where that song everybody loves it it's legendary and um <laughs> yeah, i just never like I, I i just couldn't ever that's a song that to me goes out too long there's too many different working parts of it too different too many different tempo changes but back to kiss radar for love that's kind of the way i feel about this uh it just seems very there's no flow to it from the from the off timed verses to then you know a what? completely different yet still off time chorus, uh, I just can't get behind it. Uh, so it falls at number nine. Well, you know why? You know why it don't get on to anything, man. I mean, no, it, I like the song better than you do, but they're copying copying Zeppelin in with that song. Now I can't remember. I can't remember what song of Zeppelin it is, but "Radar for Love" okay. is a carbon copy of a Zeppelin song. And Zeppelin's not too on point a lot of times. They change up all the damn time. Uh, yeah, they do. <laughs> okay, number. How many songs is on this? Hold on, I got it. Ten. Ten, got ten songs. Number eight for me is going to be Paul Stanley again, a song that used to be the very bottom, the least liked song, uh, period. I'm alive. Okay? Okay. Now, the reason this song jumped up is because them drums, bro, Eric is thumping them double basses and freaking, I wish they... Man, I wish they'd have. Hmm, I wish they'd have done a live with Eric Carr, man. Um, but anyway, it's a, it's just a high tempo, man. It's just too. You know what this song emulates? It emulates the song from uh, "Give Me More" from uh, "Lick It Up." Yeah, lick it up. Damn near yep. the same tempo, and it's wild, erratic lo- uh, vocals, man. You know, I'm alive. I'm alive. You know, I can't get enough. I mean, he's singing fast on this one, but it's just ain't got no groove to it, man. It's it's just crazy, man. But it's not bad musically. They're playing their fucking asses off. You shut the damn lyrics out, man, and listen to the jam. That's why I got that high. Gotcha. I can tell right now that we're going to, if not hit a few, we're going to be within one or two when it gets oh, to the I top five. I have a feeling. I know that. Okay. I'm going to lay a bet on that right now. Whatever you want to bet, man, because I, I know we're going to. Okay. Oh, well, my number eight then will be uh, Secretly Cruel that you've already touched on. Uh, I like the verse. Uh, the chorus to me is very plain and blah, secretly cruel. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's, but I I love his his rap, his his cadence for the verses, 
you know, I saw your picture hang. I mean, he's telling a story. I love that when it when it's obvious. Being a guy who's not into lyrics, I don't want to have to read the lyrics and and you know really decipher what they're. It's just a plain old paint the picture for you. I love that. Uh, but the chorus is just a little too lacking for me. So number eight, secretly cruel. Not badly spoken, man. That was pretty good. Hey, he can deliver better than I can, guys. I'm just, uh, I'm just a dumbass country boy. Like Jackal says, <laughs> but you understand what I say. I'm not the. Oh yeah. Uh, Rob's got Rob's got the terminology, and that's that's awesome. I'm the sidekick. You know, like the fat guy and the real skinny guy that used to make everybody nah, nah, nah. sidekick. Yeah. Uh, you, yeah. You're the entertainment. You're the entertainment, brother. Yeah, well, we got both. We both got different styles of entertainment and bring it to the channel. You know, that's that's what's cool, man. Hey, man. Radar for love next. You just touched on my number seven, right? Yeah. Yep. Radar for Love, got no, I cannot, I don't know what damn Zeppelin song they're, they're emulating. Uh, I know that Making Love got got the uh, whole lot of love emulation from Zeppelin, which I love the hell out of that. Uh, but, you know what I just, you know, not not to get sidetracked, you know what I just read that I'd never heard before, that Paul Blaise basically said he flat out uh, purposely ripped off uh, Mama, we're all crazy now from Slade for rock and roll all night. I just read this like like yesterday. Yeah, but he but how do you make that compare? I, I I'm just racking my brain going. I don't hear it. I don't know what he's talking about. But he claims he ripped off the the whole vibe and shit from Mama, we're all crazy now for rock and roll all night. I don't hear it. But you know whatever. No, I don't hear that. You know, no. come on, feel the noise. It come from Slade. You know, Slade mm -hmm. was the original, you know, jammers of that. And quite right, picked it up, made it two and redone it. Didn't want to. Yeah. But man, no. Slade done the uh, Mama, You're Already From Easy Now. And that's the second one on Quiet Right's album, which is better than Metal Health, in my opinion. They, we're we're going to get there. We're going to get you there. Gotcha. That's one of my favorite 80s metal bands right there, man. But anyway. Yes. I see. Yeah, I said Radar for Love is my number seven because it's never been up top in, on this album. Now, I can listen to this song. I can jam to it. Radar for Love, fuck yo. You know, at least they're getting a little bit of down. But uh, it's just, uh, it's a, it's a, what do you call it? Right. It's a filler. It's a filler song. Yeah, yeah, that's what I yeah, feel and, like. And, you know, to, to be fair, as much as I really like this album, at least half of this is filler. It just so happens that these filler songs are good enough to, you know, tap your foot to and not skip. You know, that's that's the difference. That's the difference. Yeah. Okay, my number seven killer intro. Any way you slice it, um, just uh, it kills me to have to drop it down here, but. It just is what it is. Paul's got so many strong songs, and, and Gene's got a damn near perfect song yet to come on here for me. Uh, any way you slice, it falls at number seven. Number seven, any way you slice it. Okay, before I give mine number six, how about that three-car this weekend at Richmond? Boys, he, read, <laughs> he, read, he hits Logano in the last turn and knocks him around, goes under him, Hamblin's trying to pass him on the inside, checkered flags flying. He turns that prick into the wall, takes the checkered flag, and when he reds two of them in turn three and wins the race, man, I, everybody was just like, damn. <laughs> yeah, Hamblin's a prick. I'm glad you put him in the wall, Austin. Good job, boy. Anyway. And that's uh, our NASCAR moment. <laughs> freaking A, man. Best, the best ending of a race all year long so far. This Saturday, I mean, this past Sunday. All right, guys. Number five for me, right? Yes. No, you're six. Six for me. <laughs> is Love's a Deadly Weapon. And this song used to be on the bottom right above I'm Alive. I never cared for them two songs at all. 
I'm alive, I still eh. But this one here, damn. Damn, probably the heaviest song on the freaking album, bro. And I'm talking tearing your ass up from the time you start to the time he stops. And Gene is singing the hell out of this song. I cannot believe I have ignored this damn song for that long. And not just headphones has just tra transformed me. That's what it's done. It's made me hear things I did never know was there. Quality I didn't even know. Was and, that's, and, that's the, and that's the whole catch 22, because if you find a song, blah, headphones are always the best bet because it brings out the nuances, the subtleties, whether it's a hi hat or even the, a cowbell or something. Uh, but if you're finding yeah. a song, just to be weak and gutless, then crank it up in a big surround sound system or your car. It just, th there's songs are made for different listening mediums, I guess is what I'm saying. <clears throat> Absolutely. Uh, um, anyway, yeah, man, that's my number six. Loves a deadly yeah. weapon, and it rocks your. It will. This song will melt your face. It's on you, bro. Mm. Okay, number six, you touched on already, and that is "I'm Alive." And to me, the strong point of this for me is the chorus. Um. I love, they're, they're kind of chanting, you know, they start singing real fast and then Paul takes her, I'm alive. I just, and yeah. then you get that part, you get that part towards the end where he holds out that high note in that break before. Oh, I just, the chorus oh. makes this song for me. So there you go. Yeah. Number six. Oh, the chorus. I'm alive. Oh, okay. Uh, the chorus is too crazy for me on that song, but it's not bad. Like I said, hey man, I'm I can remember some albums I can remember. This was number I'm Alive was the last song. It's made it up two spots for me. Somehow, okay. some way. Um but that's where it's gotta stay for now anyway. But it's not bad. They jammed the hell out of it. My number five, guys, we're getting up there now. Any way you freaking slice it, baby. <laughs> A rocking gene tune. I don't care what anybody says. I'm loving the next part. From here up, I love. Yeah, me I'm too. In. I'm all the way in on these five right here, bro. Uh, but the top two, nah. Uh, yeah, man, man, nah. Nah. Nah, there's, I had a little trouble from second, third, fourth, right in that area. But anyway, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. Anyway, I guess my top, my top four are the ones I'm absolutely in love with and always have been. Five, like I said, this is the one I spoke about earlier. Who wants to be lonely? I've got to be in the right mood. I'm with Scott. The chorus is a little much for me, but I love his delivery of the verses. That hypnotic, you know, who you look good. To. I mean, he's just totally yeah. fucking cool cat on those verses bruce's solo's fucking yeah. phenomenal as Great. is bruce's yeah. solos on most of these songs yeah so who wants to be lonely number five yeah and i yeah i probably didn't give that its due man i didn't because i'm moving it up past i'm alive dude yeah okay. because it's i don't I can't believe I had it below I'm alive. So it's my fourth one up. Yeah. I don't I must right. I must have clicked something or whatever. But anyway. All right, here we go, guys. Number four. And it's getting dicey now, man. I love all these songs. And it's used to be higher. I'm sure a little bit higher. Oh all night. A rocking ass song from front to finish. And the chorus is the fucking bomb in this song, man. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're fucking, they're harmonizing like hell, man. Oh, when you, oh, yeah. oh, you don't, they're rocking the hell out. And anybody can say what they want to about uh, all night. That is a rocking ass song, man. And Absolutely. I've always liked it, dude. It used to probably be up there like third or something, but it's still close. Okay. It's playing. Now, 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 here's one for you. 
be it end of the road or, you know, whatever tour you want to pick from the last 20 years, how fucking cool would it have been that instead of throwing in, say, you know, heavens on fire or crazy nights or something, all of a sudden, they jig, 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 I would have lost my fucking mind. Oh, God. Uh, that, dude, anything. Oh, anything. Wow. Anything. Yeah. I know I wouldn't care, man. I yeah. shoot you not. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Okay. My number four is close to one of the best Gene Simmons songs in the entire Kiss catalog for me, and that is Trial by Fire. I love this song. I love the dan and It's just a badass yeah. rhythm in this thing. And that ending where Gene's living, live. Oh, my God. The chorus, yeah, the chorus is so fucking addicting. Love this fucking song. <laughs> this would have been a good song for a single, Paul, after the tears are falling. Gene, this is rocking. Gene, getting Gene out there, man. You know, damn, dude. But anyway, can't do nothing about the past. But we can do something about the present. And my next song, which is my number three, guys, it's dropped one spot. Since the last time I can remember doing this album. Yes, it is king of the freaking mountain, baby. Bam. Always been a group, just one of the best drum intros and take off to a Kiss album, man. Just, I mean, they're jamming before he starts singing. I, I love that. I love when the song starts out and they're just rocking like hell, man. Ain't nobody sung yet, you know, getting ready to fucking play a little bit. Starts, you know, that's rocking, dude. These, this song here, man, it's all, I've always loved it, but there's one that I like just a little bit better now. Okay. Well, ding, ding, ding. We have hit number three is <laughs> King of the Mountain for me. Like he covered, phenomenal drum intro. Uh, what I love about this song is especially the breakdown. King. Oh, man, when they're doing that, you can almost see someone standing up, you know, on a rocky, you know, piled hill claiming King of the Mountain. Oh, just a great fucking song. Another killer solo from Bruce. Yeah, right. Love, always love this song. Starts just kicking your ass right from the jump with that drum intro. Eric Carr at his absolute best on this album. There you go, King of the Mountain. Yeah, man, that's as you put it, man. Just standing there, man. You know, with a kiss flag and burying it on top. Yeah, of it, man. You know, we we done it. We done it twice. How yeah. many people's done it twice in their damn career, man? So I there know. you go, bro. All right. For two guys, I know we're going to hit on one. I know, I already know what his number two is, but I ain't going to say nothing. Number two for me, you just touched on it. The best Gene song on the freaking album, Trial by Fire, bro. That is, I. I didn't give it its due back years ago with it, man, but it always caught my ear. That beat, and that, 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 just, yeah, man, that <sighs> rocking the fuck out. Yeah. Don't just tell them, guys, whoever ain't doing it, get them headphones on high, bro, and just listen to this, listen to this fucking album, man. It is badass. That's all I Amen. Want to say. Amen, brother. My number two is uh, All Night. And Scott touched on this with Who Wants to Be Lonely. You want to talk about a must-see video. My God, if you are a heterosexual male or a lesbian female, Ooh. you need to see this video. It is... Yeah. Some of the most sexy, erotic scenes ever. Paul with his mirrored freaking BC oh. Rich Warlock. 
The band looks amazing. The lighting is amazing. Now let's get to the song. One of the coolest fucking riffs that Kiss has ever had. That something so simple as that. And it gets your fucking head going before the drum even fucking starts. Paul comes in. Yeah. I mean, and like he said, this is the best I've ever heard Kiss harmonize in my life is on this song. One of the most addictive singable choruses in Kiss's catalog. If you don't like this song as a Kiss fan, it's because you hate hair metal. I get it. That's your prerogative. Hey, man. Got to be. Hey, yeah, that's like the only song. way I could, I could. It's the only way I could see it, man. Forget cheesy lyrics. Forget the double entendres and all the crap that may annoy you. This song is just amazing. And to me, I'm sure yeah. they played it on Asylum tour. I've never heard it on any other tour. Um, I would have loved to hear this. I wish there was a good, clear recording of this, a bootleg or something live, just to see if they could pull off that in harmonies. But man, what an amazing song. Awesome, dude. Couldn't have said it better. Okay, guys, we are definitely going to hit number one. I knew we were. You just can't deny it. I don't give a damn who you are. I don't care where you're from. I don't care about none of that. Tears Are Falling is the best song on this freaking album. It always has been the best song on this album. And it'll rock your face off. And he he sings his ass off. It's the solo, Bruce. It's just perfect. The video was phenomenal. I loved that setup. That was freaking phenomenal, in my opinion. Um, Fears Are Falling, they picked the right damn song for this freaking album. Maybe if they would have had, I always said this, if they would have had a different look, more of the leather type, Crazy Nights look at that time, this song here would have been like Bon Jovi or Joe Elliott, bro. If it had been in that kind of style, the jeans and the by then or something, dude, instead of looking at that, this look it 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 propelled people. It repelled yeah. them, man. And their music was absolutely phenomenal on here. That's my yeah. tears are falling right there, guys. And Rob, ching, we hit number one again. We hit, and it's no surprise, or should be to anybody who's followed this channel. It is Tears Are Fallen for me. Not only my favorite song on this album, but as you all know from ranking videos, my favorite Kiss song of all time. This is as close to a perfect song that I have heard Paul do ever. I love, I love it. I, I've told this story a few times. I never, like I said, I never got to see Asylum live. And after Asylum, my next live, or after Animalize, my next live show was uh, Hot in the Shade. So when I got to the Vegas residency and they pulled this fucking song out, I almost dislocated my shoulder when they hit that doom, 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 and my just fucking, I was losing my fucking mind. I almost, I almost passed out. I was so excited. Me too. Um, amazing live, always does it amazing live. Paul's voice oh, is fucking epic on this. The chorus is epic on this. Bruce's solo is beyond fucking amazing on this fucking song. Love I can't say enough good things, so I'm just going to shut my mouth. You all know how I feel. Kiss, tears are falling. Greatest Kiss song ever. Number one on a side. In my opinion, it's the best Kiss song made from 19. It's from no makeup years. I give it, yeah. I feel like it's the best song that was made on the whole no makeup era and beyond. That's my favorite yeah. song. It is. It sure is. That sounds like a song that would go on rock and roll over. I mean, God dang, what would I want you and is making love high tempo and that right there kind of in between like a Mr. Speed type song. Yeah. Damn, man. I Because I could just see, I could see them in makeup, man, making that damn video, dude. Fuck. Oh, I, yeah. I, won't, I oh, do not yeah. want them to take the makeup off. I don't give a damn if Ace and Peter left. I wanted them to keep it on. And keep soldiering, man. 
they, they would have never went away, man, and people would have been back on them just like that. I, we'll get into that. You know, I just think Paul Panic. There you go, man. But hey, hey, it'd be Eric Carr and Vinny Vincent or uh, Bruce Kulick by then. You know, but they would still have a character in the band, bro. Even yeah. when, even when Blondie comes along, he'd had his own character. Man, they, I wish they would have kept it that way all the time. I know the mystique would have been gone. I, everybody would know what they look like now. It wouldn't be like it was then, but still, just for... It adds a fucking visual on stage. There, There I, is, I, I will I, say that. I will say that as much as I prefer the 80s kiss and I love the look. The sound yeah, of the I love, I love the look of, man. yes. Yeah, and obviously I love the hair metal look of bands, so Paul looked amazing to me in the non-makeup years. But I will say, seeing creatures, seeing creatures, seeing the reunion twice, seeing the residency, seeing all these makeup shows of kids, there is something when you're close enough to the stage that is overwhelming and, and just awe-inspiring to see that makeup. I don't care if you know what they look like in real life. It's like a war paint. You know, it's like the road warriors when they come out to wrestle. Everybody knows what they look like without it. But man, with that paint on, there's just something. Yeah, I mean, so I get it. I get both sides. I I do. Yeah, and see, they're starting to make videos like I love it loud. I mean, damn, you're taking your makeup over after that? God, yeah. oh, dude, yeah, you know what I'm talking about, man. But anyway, oh, yeah. hey, man, great freaking album, bro. Asylum, my second. This time might be the. Man. This might be the shortest episode we've done for a Kiss album really? review, but yeah, we're at 36 minutes. Wow, um, it's been but, but the, the been problem a lot. we have, but there's not when we don't have differing opinion we're not going back and forth arguing and there's not a lot of griping yeah and and when you like every song there's really not much you can say because you're not going to nitpick it apart so i'm sure some people out there are going to be thankful this is shorter and other people are like wow that was short uh i didn't plan it to be that way it's just when you like an album so much yeah, we don't do that. It's, it goes what time we do the damn thing and get done shutting up, man. I mean, that's just the way we do it. And look, if you ain't just give this album a chance, I don't care, Kiss fan, Rock fan, I don't give a damn. Pick it up somewhere for a dollar or something, man, in a damn whatever is around your town. Put it on. It's worth it, bro. I'll tell you, I'll, I'll give you a dollar back if you, if it's not. But I'm, <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling Money back you, guarantee. That album. Don't look with your eyes. Listen with your ears, guys. There you go. There you go. All right, everybody. Until next time, thanks for watching.